cook for you? Thanks. Oh, uh, well, how do I switch it? Do I hit it? It's not there. Cool. All right, good morning. So earlier in OpenMV, at a point, he was like, that's enough marketing. Let's get to the hardware. Um, so I've got bad news. The next 15 minutes are all about marketing. Uh, so I'd encourage you to leave or stay. Uh, so anyway, that's the gist. I've also got the, some at signs throughout. That's for Twitter, um, which is kind of a separate issue of social media networks. But this talk isn't about that. So that's what the at signs mean. All right, who am I? I am the vice president of marketing at LF Objects. We make the Lulzbot line of desktop 3D printers. And, uh, oh, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and specifically, we're building an in-house team of marketing and creative folks um, that actually help market the products themselves. And so we'll be talking about that and then highlighting some really interesting examples from the community of people that uh, I think are doing things in a really interesting way. Uh, so I mentioned this, and a little bit of applause in case you're unfamiliar. We're based in Loveland, Colorado, USA, and uh, we've grown a lot. We were $1.7 million in revenue in 2013, and uh, $15 million in 2015, and we're growing more. Um, and so this is basically to say, like, hey, these ideas are working, our company is succeeding, and there's a lot of success stories in this room. Um, that's our headquarters, and this is our shop floor. We run seven days a week now. We've got 140 employees. About half of those are busy making printers. And these are the printers. All right, so I'm using the term Libre Marketing. We're at Open Hardware Summit, so I'm going to assume people know what that means. Uh, it's about user freedom to run, view, modify, and share uh, code. Um, it's about the user and how does that apply to marketing, because it's not just about Arduino and things like that. Um, I tried breaking marketing into five areas. And you can imagine that this is kind of sequential. Imagine that you've got a project and you want to promote it. Um, these would be kind of the stages at which you'd be doing some marketing work. Um, so the first one is the tools. And what are you using to actually do your campaign or to prepare something to promote a project, uh, crowdfunding on crowd supply or something like that. Two is the processes. So how are you actually developing um, either the campaign itself or, or other components of your marketing program. How do you decide which ad to run? How do you decide which folks you want to communicate with? The messaging, of course, is what's the content of your marketing itself. What story are you telling? What are you communicating or expressing to others for why they should care? Uh, content is kind of meta of like what is the actual marketing you're doing. So. For those familiar with copyright law, you, you know, it's born unfree, as Michael Weinberg says, but you can subvert that and do copy left. Um, so the actual content itself can also be libre or open. And I'm going to talk about some folks that are doing that in interesting ways. And then finally, support. Um, supporting open communities through your platform, through your campaigns. And uh, to tell each of these stories, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a company and talk about what they're doing, a uh, company or project. So for tools. The first one on the list here is graphic design. There's a whole world of free software, graphic design programs like GIMP, Inkscape, Scribus. And you can use these programs to create your campaigns. Uh, in the design world, this is less common. Um, but I assure you, it works. And uh, you don't have to take my word for it. Uh, there's an organization in Albania called URA, which means bridge in Albanian. And what they're doing is they're helping open source projects with design. And of course, they use all Libre tools. Uh, I spoke with Elio, who basically is the lead on the project. And I've got a few examples of either design they've done or organizations they're working with that we're going to kind of flip through here. And the idea is that basically, long story short, you do not have to use Adobe products if you are an open hardware company. You can use other tools to make your stuff um, if you want to. Um, so you have a choice. Um, the opportunity they found is that in open projects, the UI, UX was lacking. And I feel this is very good uh, program planning coming right after an awesome talk on design. Um, design matters. And so that's what they're trying to do. Uh, it's working. People are interested. They're working with other projects. They're gaining support. They have a Patreon campaign. 
So if you're interested in supporting them or if you've got a project that you're working on and you're like, gosh, I can't figure this interface out. Uh, you know, I'm an awesome EE, but I don't know how to design a web interface um, or whatever. Um, they can be a great resource. And, and so they're basically like a, a nonprofit agency. Imagine them like a creative agency that you could work with. All right, processes. This is the least interesting, but for marketers or for people that are managing marketers, it is uh, really where the, I think there's the most opportunity for this conversation because people tend to not talk about how they do these things because uh, they don't have time or they think other people don't care um, or maybe it's, they think it's some kind of secret sauce. Um, the example I'm going to give here in particular is Patternfly, which is a UI UX framework um, being sponsored by Red Hat. So if basically if you're doing uh, web apps, you can use Patternfly to make them look better and make them easier for the user. I spoke with Leslie Hinson on this, but they've got a great team. She, uh, she and I met actually at Red Hat Summit and they were doing really cool demos and uh, it really jumped out because their booth was beautiful. I was like, wow, like, what, what is this? What are you doing? Uh, and then she explained like, oh, we're these like sort of open designer people. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. So design matters and it was really like, oh, well, I could just kind of draw into the booth um, because of how nice it was. Uh, and so this is just a little overview of how the tool works. And it's just a sample from their site. They've got this code that you can drag and drop. Um, so this is how the tool works. Uh, and it works really well. Uh, they've also got a really active community. And the question is sort of what did they do? They did something that's really interesting. They shared uh, personas. And personas are basically these archetypes or sort of like example type customers or users that you develop in marketing campaigns to help focus your language. So you can do surveys and research and other ways to understand like what educators care about when they're trying to buy a product. Uh, or in this case, what uh, someone that's making a web app cares about when they're looking for a framework to make it better. And so they basically released these personas to the public and said, hey, here's what we're working on. Here's who we think our users are. And if you're interested in helping us develop these, profile, these personas out, let us know. This is very unusual. People very rarely talk about this kind of thing. Um, oftentimes because it's done by third party agencies who that's their, that's how they make their money and so they don't want to talk about it. Um, but in speaking with people, there's a lot of people reinventing the wheel, especially in marketing processes. And so the beauty of open source is that you don't have to keep doing the same thing over and over again. But for some reason, you know, after that product is done and it gets to the marketing department, it's like going back in time before open source existed and pretending that it wasn't there. Um, and this comes to messaging. Messaging is an exciting topic because there's different opinions on it. Some people think you should be sort of full-throated, shout from the hilltops that this is open source and that that's the most important thing. Um, other projects and companies think that it's something that should be maybe in the footer of the page or somewhere on a GitHub repository. Um, but short messages here, you can definitely market that you are open, that your product is open, that it respects user freedom. Um, people do care about that. Um, but there's a lot of things outside of that. Uh, the company I'm highlighting here is System76. So they're a GNU Linux computer maker in Denver, Colorado. Uh, I spoke with Luisa who heads up the marketing for that company and we use their machines at work. So if you're a company and you're buying computers for your open hardware company, they ought to be running GNU Linux and they ought to be from System76 or from Think Penguin or from some other manufacturer like that um, because you have a great opportunity to support other companies that are doing really neat things. Um, and if that doesn't make sense, that's fine, but realize again, you have a choice there. Um, there are options. Uh, they make beautiful computers. I use them literally every day because I have a personal one and a work one. Um, they work really well. This isn't just like a charity purchase. It's a good computer. Um, and so what they did is they ran a campaign. They had historically the 4th of July weekend, which is a big holiday in the United States, is slow for sales for them. So they decided to do a campaign focused on uh, freedom and user freedom and getting people's attention around the idea of freedom. Uh, this is the most important thing, right? Sales, how did it work? Their year over year profitability went up by over 50%. It went up even more in year two. They did a really cool campaign on social media and posting blog posts about it. And you know, you'd think that they make 
Ubuntu computers, people already know that they care about freedom, but they were able to reemphasize that and tie it in with another cultural event, a holiday, and uh, increase their sales. So even if it's a message that you've talked about a lot before around openness, uh, maybe there's a new way that you can package it to represent it to users to get them excited. Content, so this is one that is, surprises me the most because there are some folks I meet that are really uh, dedicated and committed to these ideas. You look at their code, everything is documented, all the licenses, it's like airtight. Then you go to their website and there's uh, no notice or information about copyright. Or you look in the documentation, it's like the most thorough, incredible thing you've ever read. It's like moving, it's like keeping you up at night, it's so well written but it doesn't say anywhere that it's using a Creative Commons license or the GNU uh, documentation license or something like that. Um, so I wanted to highlight, oops, there we go. I wanted to highlight a project called Satnogs. Um, so for the hardware folks, this is a really cool hardware project. They're basically building a network of ground satellite stations um, that communicate to low orbit satellites. Um, and Eleftherios is, they're based in Greece he heads up, uh, oh, we've got a video, here we go. Um, basically shows the idea of like what their hardware looks like. All of their content is freely licensed. All their videos, all their blog posts, all their documentation. Um, so, you know, use free culture licenses so that people can learn and share your documentation. And then finally, um, support. So this is a really quick and simple one, but if you're, if you're working with file formats, if you're customer facing, support free software projects. Osh Park here in Portland, uh, in Lake Oswego. I spoke with Drew, you know, he told me and basically walked through the process of them accepting KiCad formats for their boards. And it's been a really big hit. They said that customers have been excited about it. When we order boards from Osh Park, we use uh, KiCad format and submit it to them. Um, it's a really easy way to communicate, to signal to the open source community that you care, that you share those values. And sometimes it can just be a very small lift. Other things like, using WebM and other non-proprietary file formats on your website and things like that. They're little things, but they really add up. Um, so just kind of wrapping up, I am not the only person talking about this. There's many, many, many people that have spoken about this. Uh, someone following me here is Tracy Irway from Intel who gave a great talk on open source marketing uh, a couple years ago at a Linux conference. So you know, follow these people. I'm just one person here of many, many. Um, Thinking that Twitter's been a good platform, so if this is interesting, try using this hashtag. If it doesn't work, that's fine, just email me, but I'm hoping that there might be a way to spur a conversation here. Um, these are all the tools we use. This presentation was done in free software. Check out reveal.js, and then we've got all the source and attribution, because walk the walk, or at least trying to. Um, so thank you very much for your time, appreciate it, and have a good day.